Hi, I'm Kristen Evans. I'm the Education Coordinator for the University of Texas Marine Science Institute. And this week I decided to take myself on a plastic voyage. What's that? Well, it was a chance for me to collect all the plastic debris that I put into my trash can or my recycling bin to figure out what it is that I'm using all week long and how I can reduce my use of plastic. Now, plastic can be a really great thing. It helps keep our food fresh. It helps keep us safe in many ways. And it's useful for a lot of products we need to survive. But there's a lot of plastic I know that I don't need. And if I can reduce this and, or even eliminate it in my life, I think that's gonna be helpful for a whole planet and everyone living on it. As I look through the plastic that I've collected all week, I'm gonna be thinking about a few particular questions. First of all, I want to know which items would go into the landfill my trash or which items I might try to recycle. Where I live, I can't recycle a lot of items, so it's better if I can reduce or eliminate that plastic from my life altogether. By knowing those two things, I can think about how I can reduce the plastic from my house, the landfill, and even from our waterways and oceans where sometimes plastic debris accidentally ends up. The other question I'm going to be asking myself is, what was I using this plastic for in the first place? What did it help me do? Was it a bag or a container? Was it a utensil like a straw or a fork? Is there something that I can use that can be used over and over again that would be better for me and the environment? So those two questions are going to lead me on my plastic voyage. I'm going to get ready to pull out my plastic so you can see what I found. So what did I find in my plastic bin from the week? Well, I found a lot of different types of plastic. I found plastic that was light and easy to crunch up or fold like bags and small containers like these berry containers. I also found hard plastic, things that carried maybe some cleaning products or other things that I might use like my mustard container. I also found a lot of things that I realized I didn't really expect, though I should have. So items that go into packing containers, maybe the styrofoam that something fragile came in, or the wrap that kept something together, or even the bag itself that it was shipped in. And of course, some of my plastic involved bags, bags of all sorts of types. The bags that held my cereal, or maybe my beans that I ate, or just the sack that my groceries might have come in if I happened to forget my own reusable bag. So plastic, as you can see, is easy to find in our debris. And as you may have noticed as it fell all over the table, it's easy to blow around. So plastic doesn't always stay where it needs to in the trash bins that we put it in, the landfill that we put it in, or even the trucks that are taking it to the landfill. It's easily blown around and finds its way to all sorts of places it doesn't belong, like our beaches, bays, and riverways. So what did I learn from my plastic voyage this week by digging through my plastic trash? I learned there are ways for me to reduce what I have in my garbage, especially the plastic. I noticed that I could be using my reusable cups a lot more, remembering to take them with me no matter where I go. It's easy to slip into my backpack or put in my car. I also need to remember to always have my grocery sacks and my produce sacks when I go to the grocery store. That's an easy way to reduce a lot of the bags that I might be using. Another thing I could start doing a little bit more often than I do is remembering my reusable utensils and my straw. If I always have these with me, they're pretty small, I can reduce a lot of plastic waste, and that's a really good thing. In fact, when we think about all the garbage that sometimes washes up on our shores in Texas, a significant portion of it is plastic, and a lot of it happens to be single-use items. So my friend Shelby down at the Coastal Studies Center in the Rio Grande Valley is going to tell us a little bit more about what she's been finding on local beaches and how we can reduce some of that debris in our waterways, bays, and beaches. Hey Shelby, what did you find today? Hi, my name is Shelby Bissett and I'm the program manager at the UTRGV Coastal Studies Lab. Today I'm on Boca Chica Beach right here at the mouth of the Rio Grande River. I thought this would be a great place to do my plastic voyage. This area is special because the mouth of the Rio Grande River 
is here. So that means any of the pollution that could be washing in either from the US or Mexico uh, could be coming down this river and polluting the river and the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico. However, some of the trash we find here was actually left by people maybe visiting on the weekend. So we can tell um, old trash from new trash. So old trash is usually faded and new trash is, it has all the color. So when you're looking outside, you might want to look around your area to see, was this trash recent? Did it just blow in? Or did someone drop it here today? Or maybe it's been out in the environment a long time. All right, we've got another flip-flop here. This flip-flop has turtle bites. All of these are turtle bites on that. All right, a bumper. Lots of different trash here in the tide line right now. Bottles, okay, here we go. This one's good because I think this is more recent. This other trash I see is very faded. You know, you can't even see a label, um, but this might have blown in here. It's more recent chip bags, things like that can easily blow in. What else? Let me check it out. You know, we have a trash bin, some stuff in there, not too much. Some stuff um, might fall off of boats out in the water. These usually are used by shrimpers or fishermen. All right, we even have a clothes hanger, you know, not sure. I guess this must float too, um, but it's interesting how you can find so much trash on the beach whether it came in by the waves, the river that's right here, or by the wind. Um, but we can clearly see the impacts humans have on the environment when you enter a, a, an environment like this, where you've got uh, two waterways meeting, the Gulf of Mexico and the Rio Grande River. I'll give you one last look before I go. Enjoy your view of Mexico and the Rio Grande River. been on this plastic voyage through Kristen's home and what she uses there, what she found, and also here on the beach at Boca Chica. Uh, I want you guys to look at your areas, look in your homes, your neighborhoods, parks, or waterways nearby, and think about the plastic voyage that the items you find have been on.